welcome to our STEAM Tuesday activity. Today we are celebrating our my favorite season, fall, by making some cinnamon scented uh, fall leaves. And so you'll find in the description all the things you'll need. Some things are optional, but um, let's get started. So the first thing you'll want is just a bowl and maybe a spatula. And we are gonna be making a dough from just some flour, salt, and water. I have a one cup measuring cup and also a half cup. And for this um, dough recipe, you can scale it up or down however you want to or however much you want to make. And for the recipe, it's going to be equal parts flour to warm water and then half the amount of salt. So I'm going to ask you guys to tell me how much um, water and salt I need if I want to use one cup of flour. So if you want to put it in the comments, if I was using one cup of flour and I'm doing equal parts flour to water and then half the amount of salt, then how much water and how much salt will I need? So in the meantime, I'm going to just make sure that I'm flour. And you can either, yeah, so you just want to level it off at the top. So one cup here. I'm going to put it in the bowl. And I'll see if any answers are coming in. My hands are going to be dirty, so I won't be able to type back to you. But if you said that I'll need one cup of water and half a cup of salt, then you are right. So I'm going to measure out my salt. And the great thing about this recipe is that you don't have to be super accurate. So Roughly, I have half a cup of salt, and I already measured about one cup of water. So I did a little bit less because I actually did this last week to get some finished products for this video. And I thought I kept having to add, I mean, I just felt like I had to add a lot more flour to get it to not be finished. So, I'm going to pour the warm water into my bowl. And we are also going to add some cinnamon and nutmeg. And that is the things that are going to make the dough smell good and fall like. <laughs> so, again, we don't have to be super accurate. If you like the smell, then you can continue to add more. But you're going to see here, I'm just mixing it now. So mixing it. And eventually, the dough should be at least one big ball of this uh, Play Doh y type texture. Um, and if it doesn't get that way, we're going to just add more flour. So you're going to see like now it's a, a thick paste. And it still seems pretty wet to me. So I'm just going to add a little bit more flour. Add it a little bit at a time, but it smells nice and cinnamony, so that's nice. And this is just going to be a quick reminder we don't want to eat this dough because it probably doesn't taste very good, but also it's not safe to consume raw dough or raw flour. I mean, um, and yeah, I mean, again, it's a lot of salt, not good for you. 
Right. So I can kind of, I mean, it's kind of um, maybe thick enough for me to put down on more, more um, flour on the table. So I, I mean, I have a little bit of a mat here, but um, so you probably do want to either use a mat or even just yeah on your canner. You're gonna have to clean it really well afterwards. But uh, sprinkle a little bit of flour on my surface, a little bit more in there just so it thickens. Yeah, again, it felt like I was adding a lot of flour the first batch I made. So maybe the one to one ratio is actually not the, the best, but it was the recipe I found. All right, so that's probably good enough. So the more cinnamon and the more nutmeg you add, the more brown and like bally be it should be. But at this point, you can either um, knead it and then add some food coloring to make different color leaves, or you can just keep it brown because that is also very fall-like. But if you want to tell me in the comments other colors that remind you of fall, I'd love to hear that. So again, we're going to just pop our dough onto our um, surface and we'll put some more flour on the top as well and we're gonna knead it so we're just gonna we're just gonna put it all together and squish it all together and we're gonna want to do that until it is no longer sticky. And you can see it's super sticky now, which is not not fun to play with, but um, yeah, this is a little bit, it's gonna be a little bit messy. But I am going to hopefully get, you're just gonna keep adding flour till you feel like it feels, it's gonna feel soft and supple, but not sticky like it is right now. Which could take a little bit of time to do, but this part is also one of my favorites, so I'm not gonna even mind. Except I'm also going to try to get my hands clean enough so I can do other things after and touch other things, but maybe that's not possible. All right. So again, I keep sprinkling more flour on it, and the flour is going to help with the sticky. Eventually, it will turn into just a little ball of soft dough. And you can either at that point flatten it with um, your hands because your hands are probably likely already super sticky and, uh, and um, messy already. You can just flatten it and then um, again, these are going to be optional, but we're going to be making some leaf. So if you are lucky enough to have some leaf cookie cutters, that's really helpful. So I am happy to report that I love baking enough that I do have a lot of different cookie cutters. So. Um, so I do have them, but if you don't have a uh, leaf cookie cutter, then you could just use maybe a butter knife and shape the leaves yourself. So you can see now my dough is way less sticky and way more Play-Doh like. So, yay. Um, oh, 
probably add a little bit more flour. And eventually, yeah, I think um, I am out of food coloring, but this is a good time to maybe split your dough up into three piles and color them differently. So I see we probably have some people that have said that yellow and orange are also, and red are colors that remind us of fall. As, as the leaves um, turn colors like and fall off, they, well, they turn those colors. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, so you see I have a little dough ball. If I had food coloring, I'd probably take this time and split it up, put the coloring in there, and then start kneading it again with the color. But again, I'm out of food coloring, so we're not gonna do that today. And that is going to, then the next part, as I said, you can either Use your hand to squish it down into a flat ball. Here is a red one I made before I ran out of food coloring. So you can see it's soft. Oh, it got real sticky still. So let me just add some more flour to this one. This one was pretty dry and a good texture before, but I guess. I shouldn't have made it a week ago. <laughs> but, okay. So again, you can squish it down so it's nice and thin and use your cookie cutter or again, you can use a butter knife and just cut out a shape of a leaf. So leaves come in all shapes. It depends on the trees, of course. But I'm just gonna do well, okay, no. <laughs> just cutting did not go super well. I'm gonna try my fresh dough. Yeah. Adding a little bit more flour again. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I guess we can either yeah, soft or pat it on thin and use a knife, which turns out a harder than I remember it being. And I'm just going to use my cookie cutter, cut out my little leaf. I do not like how that turned out. I think it's still too sticky. So when you when you cut out your leaf, or if, yeah, either with the cookie cutter or the knife, and it's too sticky still to get off your counter, then it probably needs a little bit more flour. Yeah, add a lot more flour. The good thing about this is it we don't have to be super precise. But we're still practicing our measuring and math skills. And also, it's okay if you get the dough colors mixed up too, because it's kind of nice to have the marble. All right, let's see. Let's see if that is good enough. Um, Good to experiment a couple of times, and it's okay for it to not work out sometimes. So, all right, let's see if um, that is better. I'm gonna squish it down. I'm gonna try to cut it out again. And it should kind of like look like a cookie, the way a sugar cookie might look. I mean, this cookie cutter is not great, but you can see here, it's. I can pick it up and it's 
holding its shape pretty well. So we know that that is um, a success. And at this point, also optional, you can make a little hole using a straw or something. So let's have a reusable straw. I'm gonna make a little hole at the bottom. Just so if we want, if I want to hang this later, then I have a little hole it can hang from. And then I can also use my knife to maybe make some lines to make it look more realistic, like a leaf usually has little lines. Yeah, this is, I mean, I don't, yeah, I don't love the, the shape of that maple leaf. It's a bit uh, chubby. So uh, I will, yeah, I mean, I will try another one. Fix that. Um, I can also use a rolling pin to get it really thin and really flat. Because the next step is actually going to be for us to dry it out. I will show you the end results after, but um, they should be either dried out in a very low temperature oven. So I think I baked mine for like three or four hours at 170 degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit, <laughs> Fahrenheit. Um, yeah, so I did that for a couple of hours. And again, I made them ahead of time. So they are uh, fairly dry now. There's one that I didn't put in the oven and I've just left it uh, on the counter and then eventually flipped it over after two days and let it dry out really, really slowly. And that also worked okay. Yeah. Making this little, I think it's like a, an oak leaf. That's what it reminds me of. I guess it's probably not super accurate. Okay. I don't have enough flour. Yeah. That's okay. So, yeah, eventually you're going to put them on a baking sheet and just pop them in the oven. Again, at a very low temperature, the lowest you can get, so 200 um, or lower is ideal, and just for a couple of hours. And eventually what you'll get is something like this. So it smells like fall because it smells like cinnamon. And you can see this one is the one that I left out overnight. So it more or less has the same um, texture as that other one and it works just the same and you don't even have to use the electricity um, and the oven, uh, have the oven on for like multiple hours. So you can just leave it on a counter. Uh, first, this was the side that was up and you can kind of see the side is a little darker. It was the side it was on. Eventually I flipped it and now it's been some time, I guess about a week and it's hard and if i had a little fake tree i might hang this or uh, string it together and just have it as decoration somewhere i don't actually have anywhere to put it but anyway they smell like cinnamon and nutmeg and those are my favorite smells in the world so they are super lovely uh you can see i also this one was the one i cut out with a knife instead of a cookie cutter and like this one was the one that I tried to um, use the maple leaf cookie cutter. But yeah, so that is basically our activity for today. So to recap, you're using about one, uh, equal parts flour and water. So in this case, I used about a cup of the flour and a cup of the water, but I mean, ultimately there was a lot more flour that went in just with the kneading it and stuff. Like, I think this is still probably too soft. Um, and so, yes, you're using 
one, well, whatever measurement you choose, but equal parts flour and water, and then half the amount of salt. And then eventually, you'll hopefully, and then obviously you'll use your cinnamon and nutmeg. Cloves is another nice spice that is very fall-like. And so you're gonna combine all of those in a bowl, mix it, and eventually knead it. And um, you can color your dough and you're not gonna eat it. And then once you have your leaf shapes, you'll pop it in the oven, either on 200 degrees Fahrenheit or lower for hours, or you'll leave it out for a week to dry out naturally on its own. And so that is our steam activity this week. If you have any questions uh, after I wash my hands, I will answer them in the chat. And otherwise, just uh, have a great day. <laughs>